they're all I'll throw away, you know. Those things would be real cheap, right? Um, and you know, so the April meeting, we're going to be, you know, have somebody come in and talk to us about open source projects. And it's a medical application uh, that they're using in third world countries. This guy actually went to the third world country and you know was working with people out there. Uh, at least that's what I understood him to say. So, what's the date on that? So second it's the Saturday. second Saturday, and I'd be at noon, you know, in probably in this room. I think you go to your website and get the information. And you know, you can connect up with a lot of other people. I mean, go to PenguinCon in uh, April, the weekend of April 24th. That's uh, uh, you know a lot of people doing you know, all kinds of things with open source. Uh, there's another guy at the mug, uh, mug.org, and he basically has this really. Uh, application he built that's open source application that's being used all over the world right um, it's a uh, was that terminal LTSP the um, Linux terminal service project so it's basically it's using a dub terminal to connect up um, to a central server that then really retains all your information so now that you know, usually get in like a school or something like that where the kids come up they use this little terminal or things to do all this so you know uh, he, he basically built that project, so you know, they did that to contact He built it, but he doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. Yeah, no, he no. turned it over to a couple other guys, and they're actually running a company that you can, uh, like thin clients, for running all off of a, um, a Linux server. Uh, I actually ran it for fun, and you can, um, you can build a computer lab out of it. You have one massive server running, and then you can boot like 30 other computers off of it. No OS on the computers, sure. but um, it's network booting now, the LTSP. So that was even before of Raspberry Pi because you know even the small devices were, you know, harder to, harder to get and more expensive and all that stuff. What's the name of this club again? Metro Detroit Linux User Group. M D L U G dot org. Do you guys have like a, a Slack channel or like a chat? So we have a e we're old school. Okay. So it's email. Okay. <laughs> now there's a Facebook site that nobody uses. Okay. So it's mdlug. Mdlug.org. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. We, we if you want to step in and be but nominated as the secretary, be, in an instant okay. we can call you the secretary, <laughs> and you could do all our social media stuff, right? Um, Is this a Slack channel? Yeah, because I use I I'm in like a couple of like open data stuff. I mean I don't I grew up in Michigan, but I live in New York, but I. For a bunch of stuff, um, I have like a for like um, my open data stuff. I have like a group of like a thousand people. But yeah. if anyone's working on something or they found like some cool new data set or whatever, they just share it on a Slack channel. And nice. We constantly have discussions. Okay, on so that. I'm not really familiar with Slack have, channel. Okay. We have IRC channel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, our channel is yeah. fairly quiet. <laughs> um, all right. So what I thought I'd plug in my laptop and. Uh, show you how you would um, set up <laughs> yeah, Raspberry Pi image on a, on a uh, SD card. And I'm going to do a dual screen right now. Um, there's three minutes left for this download, so I'll, it'll be ready in just a minute. But these are the other images I have. Um, there's, this one's called Berry Boot, and actually Berry Boot's pretty cool too. Where you, it is um, right here, it's a downloader where it'll download and install the OS for you. So we throw Berry Boot on there, and then you choose when it, the first time it boots, you choose which one you want. So this one has a web server. It's called Berry Server, a terminal server. Uh, uh, Debian uh, or Raspbian, Memtester, OpenELEC, Puppy Linux, uh, Rasp Razor, I'm not sure what that is, and Sugar. Um, Sugar is the OS that runs on the OLPC computers, that one laptop per child. And that's based on Fedora, but they've done a lot of changes on it. Um, just for, just for the hell of it, I thought you were going to sugar on a steak spin. Oh, yeah. I was lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never really did anything with it. What I thought was really neat about it is they have built-in um, 
mesh networking. So if you have a lot of these, and one of them can be connected to the internet, and you can, you know, as long as they're within range of each other, they all have internet access. Uh, so that's what's really cool about that sugar. Um, so the one I'm looking at right now, this is Laka. So you just click download. This is an 85 meg download. And the library wouldn't let me download it, so I'm actually doing it over my cell uh, tether right now. Um, which it's almost done. Eight seconds left, seven. Five, four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you're running on Windows, then you can get, uh, you know, unzip it. You can use 7-zip or, or some other, um, something that will do a G-zip. Um, but being, I'm running Linux here, it'll, we can just extract it right here. Oh, it's there somewhere. <laughs> right. I, well, I wanted to put in my Raspberry Pi images. So. When I was online, I saw that Microsoft announced they're supporting, I guess, Windows 10 Internet of Things for the Raspberry Pi upcoming. Did you guys see that? I, I don't really know what that. that meant. I don't think it means it runs like a desktop version of Windows 10. I think it means it runs maybe some kind of subset of Windows we can put on Raspberry Pis mm -hmm. at a later date. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Probably want to be in some Windows folder. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> not too widely adopted. It'll turn out to be XP, right? <laughs> what does that mean? There we go. All right. So in Linux, you have to find out what device name the your uh, card uh, map to. So you can do F disk minus L or dash L, and that'll list all hard drives, and I zoomed in way too much. Do a grip pot. There we go. Um, and we can see this last one showed up is an 8 gig uh, SD card, or I don't know if you can tell. So it's showing here that this is the device name, that's how big it is, and, and then these are the partitions on that. Uh -huh. um, which actually yours already has something on it. It probably has noobs on it. Would, did you buy it from there? No, I, I started downloading some stuff, but um, I was getting some okay. errors last night and I was tired. Oh, I see. But yeah, but if you want to, if you want that lockout, we can just throw it on there. So, the this is what we're looking for right here. That's the disk name. So it's the MMC BLK zero, uh, and it shows up as that because of my the way my SD card reader is on this laptop. So what was that command again? F disk space dash L. Minus L. You can just format all that. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was showing. Uh, and, and another important thing, <clears throat> a lot of times, um, especially like with your cell phones, you'll get the micro SD card yeah. with an adapter. Yeah. Those do not get recognized by Raspberry Pis. It must be a full-size SD memory card. The, on the older ones, the, all the new ones have the micro really? SDs. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've, got, I've got the B, the yeah. Raspberry Pi B, and a couple times I've tried, because uh, I've got some micro SD cards that I'm not using, and I put them in an adapter. My laptop sees it absolutely no problem. It installs the OS on, but you throw it in the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't, it doesn't read it at all. Oh, yeah. Power or boot up. So in Linux, we'll, we do a dd command, but to 
make sure that I have all the right options, I'm just going to Google it. Um, or no, they have on this next step. It tells you how to do it. I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that. But, um, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's where. See, on this, if you were to do it, you can just follow through on this website. It actually shows you how to do it. Mm -hmm. So this is the Windows how to do it. Um, Thank you, Gil. Mm -hmm. and, and if you install Pydora, Red uh, the Fedora project has put Actually, together the Pi install. It doesn't have the Linux okay. instructions. So if you're running like Fedora Linux, um, it's available as a YUM install package. Not so just that. Do, yeah. I just need that install second Pi installer. It'll bring down the application, BS install it on your board. system. Okay, yeah. And then you can just double click it to open it up. And you say, you know, pick this memory card and put this okay. image on it. Go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it formats your memory card and installs the operating system. When it's complete, you just eject your SD card, slap it into your Raspberry Pi, and you're off and running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're singing on this command, if you're interested, DD is a command for copying raw data. Can't remember exactly what DD stands for. Data dump. Duplicate yeah. disk. Data dump, duplicate disk, something. <laughs> All right. So BS is the block size. So we're saying use five and then what is it? Oh, that should be a capital M. Yeah. And then input file, which is our image we're doing. And it has a long name, but dot .img. And then OF is output file, which uh, in Linux, every folder, device, files are code files. In, in like old school Linux, so that's why this command. And then so we put, then we put the device name, which we found up here, this device name, mm -hmm. and because of the wrap, dev mc. So I typed that up. Do you put the the number on the end there? I thought you that was like the partition. I don't know if that's this one. So you have p ones, p zeros. In this okay. Case. All right. So the p one, p zero, are like partitions within that or something. Exactly. All right. Uh, yeah, what he's talking about is the partition right here. Yeah. It's this P1 is for the part first partition, P2 is for the second partition. And you